with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Before we read the text, I'd like to uh, speak of the joy of being here tonight. Well, I came from Brazil. Where I'm on a business trip. I didn't plan to come here to Florida. I was on the north. But the Lord has a purpose for all things. I bring an embrace from the brethren from Brazil. It's very good to see the work of the Lord uh, prospering here. The work, the ministry of Pastor renewed in the life of the brethren, the deacons, workers, the work that the church has been done, been doing. And Pastor Renew sent a message. Could you help uh, the service? I was thinking, what should I preach? And I remembered a message when I uh, converted 20 years ago. Pastor Jiddu went to the church of Castellanos and he preached this message and spoke to me greatly. And I want to share with you tonight. Maybe it will speak to your heart as well. I invite those that can to stand up to read the word of the Lord in the second, second letter, letter of Apostle Paul. Chapter 12, only verse 14. We're going to read together. Let's wait for the children and the intermediary so that they, they may also follow the reading. Second Corinthians, second letter to the Apostle Paul, chapter 12, verse 14. Amen. Together. Now, for the third time, I'm ready to come to you. And I will not be burdensome to you. For I do not seek yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. Hallelujah. Visit us with your spirit. Bring joy to our soul with your word. So rich that on its own speak to our hearts. But may your spirit speak to each and one of us. Bring more joy to our soul. And that your name be glorified. Speak to us, Lord. Speak through us. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated. Yes. Now, for the third time, I am ready to come to you. And I will not be burdensome to you, for I do not seek yours, but you. Isn't it not natural for the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. What is the gospel? If somebody asks you, what is the gospel? The gospel is a project, a prophetic project from God to man. We are learning this. Prophetic because it does not come from human mind of somebody with uh, means, with a lot of diplomas. Man has no participation in it. It came from the eternity of God, a project from the God Almighty the God created of the heavens and earth, the God of every grace, blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the project of salvation. Paul is writing to the Corinthians, and his word is a word 
a prophetic word. For the third time, I will be with you. I'm ready to be with you. The project is done in phases. The Lord created all things. We believe because of the, His Word. God created heaven and earth. And He creates, He created men. The crown of His creation. What God always wanted was to relate to men, to be close to men. God visited Adam and Eve every day. The Bible says in Genesis, at the beginning of the afternoon. But man made a choice. We're learning also class about the original sin, the disobedience. It was a choice. Disobedience brought man to be destitute from the Eden where he was. But God didn't hand man to his own devices. God created a project of salvation to rescue man because God loves man deeply. And in his project, we'll find a God of grace, a God Almighty, a God of love, a God of mercy that is persisting with man at every time, every hour. Persisting for what? Persisting so to, because God wants to be a part of man's life. God wants to take care of man's life, to guide man, to bless man. And on the other hand, we see men resisting the love of God and His Gospel. From Genesis to Revelation, God is insisting and men resisting. For the first time, for the second time, for the third time. And the first time was the moment of the Father, when the Father uh, took care of man. The Lord separated Noah and uh, Noah's family. God spoke to him, visited him, spoke of the ark, separated family. Noah passed and God kept talking with the patriarchs. Abraham, the, uh, one called, he called Abraham, leave our family and the, your land, the obedience of Abraham and faith of Abraham. God working on us, Lord. And Isaac, the son of promise, obedience. Jacob. Joseph. The beautiful story of Joseph. The Egypt. The slavery. God working. God will hear the plea of a nation. God will raise Moses. God spoke to Moses. God rescued that nation with powerful hand, strong hand, with signs and wonders. God places that nation walking towards the promised land, Canaan, Canada, where flows honey milk what God wanted. God wanted this nation to be a witness of Him, of His love and His grace to the people, the peoples that were around them in those days. God would give those this nation everything, all the means for this. God established the service uh, in the desert. God shows the tabernacle. God raises the priests. God separates the day. God provided the victim, the lamb. Everything was there. God rose the life of Abram to minister. They enter in the, on the land. The word of the Lord is fulfilled. And now God was going to use Israel to be witness in the presence of the other nations, of a God, a Savior, God that blesses. Joshua, the judge, what a struggle, the resistance of men, the kings, they asked for king, 
They want to have a king, so I'm going to give them. Saul, David, Solomon. The kingdom is divided, the trials, and the Lord uh, raises prophets in the midst of the nation. But men kept resisting the voice of God. Bad kings, Ahab, Jezebel, when we hear the lamentations of God in the Old Testament, we hear the prophet Jeremiah saying, they killed my prophets. Men that I sent to speak from my part, we don't want, they don't want to hear the voice of God. Imprison the prophet, put him in, a, in prison. The lamentations, we hear the prophet saying, my people did two evils. They left me a, a, a place with water and dug, dug wells that don't have water. We'll see the prophet's uh, in lamentation with God. The crow. The dove. They know. They know the time of the, the seasons, but my people don't know. Men resist in the love of God, the grace of God. God resists the governance of God and His Lordship. The judgment, the result of disobedience, the Babylonian captivity. God raises Daniel, a man that was 70 years in captivity. He goes back to the land. Ezra and Nehemiah, they rebuilt the temple, and the, the, the difficulty continues. God wanting to speak, God wanting to take care of man, and man resisting. My brethren, this is the gospel. God stopped talking. And it was not worth speaking anymore. The kings didn't want to hear what the prophet wanted to say from the part of, of God. Remove this prophet from here. He's only saying bad things. Imprison the prophet. Kill the prophet. And then God decided to go silent. According to the ones that studied the Bible, there were 400 years of silence. It was a prophetic silence of God. There was no manifestation of the Spirit of God in prophecy. God silenced for 400 years because men didn't want to hear. And then for the third time, is the first time the father with man God will send John the Baptist the last prophet of the Old Testament there was no room for him in the synod in the temple in the temple in Jerusalem because the religion was already established the priests were there and an eyes in Caiaphas and so he went to the desert the voice that came from shout from the desert repent because the kingdom has come, the Messiah is coming. They cut his head off. But Jesus came. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And was now the second time. The Father took what he what's the best. What he had what was his best. The firstborn of God, the Emmanuel, the God with us. Yeshua of God, the Savior, and sent him as a man, the verb incarnate of God, he left the glory of, of the Father and came to this world to proclaim the love of God, the gospel, the good news. He was baptized uh, when he was 30 years of age in the uh, shores of the Jordan River, and he began his ministry, was prosperous with signs and wonders, resurrections. Lepers have been cured, blind seeing. He walked from village to village, house to house, blessing, curing, delivering. There is no. He had no place to sleep, had no place to eat. He had long fastings. He received everyone that searched, sought him. He was surrounded by the, the crowds. Three years of ministry non-stop without rest early dawns at night he walked in Israel from north to south only doing good 
and once again the resistance of men. He cured on Saturday and then the Pharisees would complain. He operated a miracle and the Sadducee would complain. The scribe would complain, but he could not have cured because today was Saturday. Who is this man? This man is, is creating trouble. The resistance of men, the resistance of a nation, the resistance of the religious. In, in Matthew 23, the Lord, uh, you will see the Lord speaking. Hypocrite Pharisees, he said many times. At the end of his ministry, his lamentations, he will go to Jerusalem, he will see the multitude, and he will say, they like sheep without shepherd. Everything that he wanted was to take care of them. He is the good shepherd. That's why. That's the reason why he came. Everything that he wanted was to bless. The sick. He was sick. He was um, skinny, just unrecognizable at the end of his ministry. Lamentation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How many times? I want to gather you under my wings. Jerusalem, that kill the prophets and stone those that are sent to you. How many times I wanted to put you under my wings like the chicken does with their cheeks. And that was Jesus' lamentation. Lament. The fox, they had uh, their houses. The birds had their nests, but the Son of Man has no place to rest his head. Twelve uh, apostles, one betrayed him. For thirty uh, coins of silver, the price of the worst slave, one denied after the resurrection, and another didn't believe after the resurrection. Three years, his, his judgment his um, trial, uh, celebration. Barabbas and him, the deceiver, the killer, the liar, the destroyer of uh, homes. Pilatus was going. Pilatus was going to ask, "Who is you want to uh, free?" Uh, release Bar Barabbas. We don't want anything with this Jesus. We have a uh, uh, religion of, the, of thousands of years. We have our priests. No, he is nothing for us. That's what Israel was saying. The crown of thorns just to show that he was not a king. He's not our king. We have a king. The slaps on his face just to say that he's not a prophet. Prophesy. Prophesy that who uh, slapped you? the robes uh, ripped just to show that he was not a, a priest the indifference the father was seeing all of it from eternity the cross two prisons two uh, criminals was the worst uh, death outside of the city Was the Father here? Like I am? If it was with us, we would uh, destroy man. Man is evil. Man resists the love of God. But on the cross of Calvary, he, he, he shouted, Lord, forgive them because they know, know what they are doing. That's why we are here tonight, because His blood washed our sins. Because He forgave my sin. Lord, forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing. They resist, because they don't know the love of God. And there, he dies, he is resurrected, and he overcame death, and he went up to heaven. It was the second time. But blessed be the name of the Lord, Paul wrote for the third time, I'm ready to come to you. The word we fulfilled, the brother that preached, yes, in John 14. When the church was gathered in Jerusalem, 
And on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came upon the church. It was the third time, the beginning of the primitive church, 2,000 years ago. There are 2,000 years that the Holy Spirit is being persisting with men to bless men. That's why we're all here tonight. Because one day he was persisting with me 20 years ago. And then for the third time, I'm ready. The Spirit of the Lord is here tonight. That's what the sister glorified. He's ready. Not so you can be uh, from the church Maranatha, but He's ready to bless your life. He's ready to cure the, the wounds of your soul. He's ready to deliver you. He's ready to restore your home and to bless your professional life. He's ready to save you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 2000 year, for 2,000 years, He's been ready. No denomination, no new no religion. God is persistent. You may have entered here for the first time, like I entered 20 years ago. But what He wants is to bless you. He has not changed. He wants to participate in your life. He wants to enter into your life, in your marriage, into the raising of your children and guiding your professional life. And for the third time, I'm ready to come to you. And you will write something that was extraordinary because uh, and I will not be a burden to you. Do God doesn't care what you have, if you're a doctor, if you have education. Lord doesn't care with material things because He's the owner of a gold and silver. He does not depend on me for anything, but He's ready to bless me because I don't seek what yours, but I seek you. The Lord is seeking you because He's loved you. He loves you. He loves you, my sister, and He is persisting, and you who entered here, He brought you here. I don't seek what is yours, but I seek you. God placed men. Uh, God gave men unique characteristics. His fingerprint is unique. For God, you are unique. The iris is unique. It's the large corporations now they are reading the iris in, in order to allow people to enter into uh, re secure regions and they read your iris and they allow you to enter it. You are unique for God. Even if you have a twin brother, his fingerprint is, is different than yours. His iris is different than yours. Because salvation is personal. He is individual. It is a choice. And you for God is irreplaceable. No one will be able to replace the mansion that God has prepared for you in eternity. God said in John 14, in the house of the Lord there are many dwellings. And your dwelling and mine are there. And I believe in the blood the blood of Jesus that we will have in this dwelling. Because if I don't have that dwelling, it will be empty because I'm unique for God and you're unique for God and he brought you and I here to say once again that he, he I love you I love you I want to bless you and salvation is personal you my now for the third time I'm ready to come to you and I will not be burdensome to you for I do not seek yours but you blessed be the name of the Lord is persisting with us every day because He loves us. You are unique for God. 2,000 years ago, for 2,000 years, the Holy Spirit is ready to bless. And His request is the following. Give my son your heart. The Lord has shown tonight. The Lord has given a spiritual gift that is very interesting. A woman that is here tonight. She has 63 years of age. She's a very good person. But she needs to have a meeting with the Lord Jesus. And now the request the Lord is giving to this woman is that give me your heart. If you, the word says, if you, today you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. 
What prevent you from opening your heart tonight and say, Lord, enter into my heart. You seek me, Lord, so here am I. What do you have for me? Enter into my life, into my marriage, in my dreams, in my plans. And you conclude saying the following. For the children are not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. What is the inheritance that we are going to leave to our children? Material goods? Yes, it's very important. We work for this, we fight for this. But the greatest inheritance that we can give to our children is a salvation uh, from God in Christ Jesus. They are here, they love the church, they love the praises, they love the Sunday school, they love the classes because the kingdom of God, of God come from them. That's the inheritance. If Jesus doesn't come, the next generation, if Jesus doesn't come in our generation, they have an inheritance that we are giving to them every day. And now for the third time, I'm ready to come to you and I will not be a burden to you. The gospel is not a burden. Gospel, when I thought the gospel is a blessing, a, a friendly God, a God a merciful, a God that opened doors, a God of the impossible. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us sing a song. Place your heart in the altar of the Lord. Glory to God. Your life, a family.
Chuck Lorre find the lore. to Jesus, the Lord spoke about us, a woman that is with us, and she, in the last few days, she's been pleading to the Lord, help, in her trials, her difficulties, and the Lord is saying to this woman, your prayer has been heard, the Lord is ready to hear man. Maybe you entered here with a problem, with a trial, with a pain, with a loss, with a sadness. The Lord is ready to bless you. Now it says the following, rest. Because the blessing has already been decreed. The Lord has already shown a man. The Lord brought him tonight. The Lord is God's hand. Sometimes God may have used someone to invite you. But it's not the invitation of the person. It was the Lord who brought you here. And he's saying, I want to give you security and I want to guide your steps. How much love, how much persistence, right? Yes, we're here tonight. And here am I, I'm ready. And for the third time to be with you. I'm not going to be happy to you. For the first time was the father. The second time was the son. The third time is the time of the Holy Spirit. There's not going to be a fourth time. We're leaving, we're learning from Sunday school, the time of the year. And I'm coming soon. I'm coming, my time is near, I come soon. I'm at the door, I'm knocking. And he is now, tonight, at your door, knocking. And he wants to enter into our heart to direct our life to bless us. He's ready. Blessed, exalted be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
church glorifying the name of the Lord. Glory to God. to God. Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. Give your praises. For your great love. We praise you for because you never gave up on anyone, any one of us, for your persistence, for the presence of your Holy Spirit towards us. We praise you, Lord, for your grace, for your salvation, for the families, for those that entered into this place tonight. Because we know, Lord, that none of us will leave this place in the same way we entered. May you bless each one of us in our necessity. Open the doors, Lord, in this week that begins. May this week be a week of victory for your people, of blessings, of prosperity, of experiences, of renewed faith, the joy of the Lord in our homes. 
in the life of our children, Lord. Bless those that are going to go on trips. Your sermons there are uh, coming from uh, the seminar in the north. Bless the church in your nation, in this nation. Bless your prosper your kingdom in every state. Bless each one of us. Be with us, Lord. Bring joy to our night and our rest. And tomorrow may be a day of victory. We pray. We're happy and thankful in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet uh, fellowship and uh, sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit be resting upon uh, the, all the people of the world, uh, the, of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service is over. If you desire a prayer, a word, uh, our, my, our workers and I, we are ready to help you. We leave our embrace. Remember to pray for us. I'm from Vila Velha. Pastor Amadeu was my pastor. Now on another church, Itapuan Dois. My name is Frank. Pastor Ronil has many churches praying for him in Brazil. So pray for us as well. It is a joy to be here. I was not ready. I didn't even come with a suit. I came at work. If you notice, the the donor is a little larger than I. But uh, what matters is the joy to be here with the brother and to see what the Lord has done. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To everyone, the peace of the Lord. Is there any message?